Former President Goodluck Jonathan has stressed the need for electoral management bodies in Africa to be free to discharge their responsibilities in order to deliver credible elections. He also enjoined African lawyers across the continent to use their culling to promote justice, equity and the rule of law. Well, joining us to discuss this are lawyers, um, Obina Chiku and Emeka Mwadiuke. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank okay. you so much. So this is a clarion call of sorts um, by the former president. Of course, he's not just talking about Nigeria, but he's talking about electoral bodies across Africa. But we're in Nigeria, so let's you know use Nigeria here as a case study. Now, um, it's very interesting that we have so many... Um, government um, departments and agencies that have the appendage independent but are not necessarily independent in reality because who because of the person who decides to, to pick the, the the head of that ministry or that department or that agency and this is detail for INEC and so a lot of people have queried the independence of INEC over and over again and the question again is here, how independent is INEC? I'm going to start with you, Barista Awadi, okay. Is INEC anywhere close to the independence that begins, uh, you know, its, its name? Uh, thank you so much. Um, it's, um, it's a difficult one to really say, you know, that INEC is uh, independent. A lot of commentators believe that the independence attached to its name is, uh, is essentially nominal. Um, and um, although we can say that maybe over time, INEC has tried to do one or two things to improve on its performance and uh, maybe try to, uh, you know, uh, strengthen its independence, so to speak. But um, essentially, we can say that it's, uh, it's work in progress. But the fact that the, the person who leads or heads INEC is nominated um, by the president, whoever he is, and then, of course, ratified by the National Assembly, does that not call to question where his allegiance or his, um, where he takes his orders from? Because that's also been part of the debate over time. You have uh, you've actually raised a very fundamental issue because um, appointment of uh, key uh, officers of uh, INEC is a, it's a fundamental drawback on its uh, purported independence. Um, so you see a situation where the INEC chairman is nominated by uh, uh, not appointed by the, the president and ratified by the National Assembly. All the uh, national officers or national commissioners are appointed by the president. So it's a major, major uh, challenge. Uh, because when, for instance, you even see a situation where perhaps the, uh, the sitting president who is uh, seeking re-election uh, you know, has a mandate to appoint all these people. So as they say, he who pays the piper, uh, or he maybe in this instance who nominates the piper, he pays in tune. So it's quite a major challenge, and uh, maybe as we go on, we may try to explore how we can uh, tackle this uh, major drawback. But Sachuku, it's, again, some of the issues that have been raised in terms of independence of INEC, uh, just as I said, is also the fact that they still have to depend financially on you know, the federal government per se, there's a lot of signing off that has to be done by, you know, the presidency or the federal government instead of it getting independence because independence is not just about it not being nominated or uh, the, the head not being nominated or appointed by Mr. President. It also has to do with his finances. But looking at the Nigerian constitution as it is, how easy is it for us to single-handedly um, make INEC independent without having to go back into the Constitution to change some things? Okay. Um, well, let me once more say thank you for having me. I, before I go to this question, I will say that I appointment of the 
INEC officials. To me, I may not I may not be the reason why the uh, INEC is not independent. It may not be the reason because uh, no matter how you juggle it, no matter how you weave it around, somebody must still appoint somebody. And uh, nobody will just wake up and uh, announce to Nigerians that uh, he or she is now the chairman of uh, independent national electoral commission. Somebody will still have to appoint the person. But what I want to say is that appointment is not the problem. The problem is to is the institutions, weak institutions that we have in Nigeria. That's why it's as if whoever that is appointed can now or has the leverage to pander towards a political party or uh, live in accordance with the apron strings of uh, whoever that appointed him. But if we have strong institutions, for instance, let's say the security agencies, the police is independent, the institution of the police is strong, the military is strong, and all other, the anti-corruption agency is strong, and all the other institutions that, uh, that uh, have subtle or visible check on other institutions, that will, that will help. Then again, secondly, uh, from what you asked, uh, whether or not we could do that uh, without the Constitution. I do not think that we will, we can do that without the Constitution. Look at uh, what has happened in Nigeria within the past three or four years. There were state governors or even a president in Nigeria where Nigerians came out, uh, protested and shouted, this government must go and all that, and tried all kinds of ways to protest on the streets, at least to have the government go. The government will not go, why? Because the, there is a constitutional provision that provides for how a president, how a governor can be removed from office. So it doesn't matter what the governor does. It doesn't matter what the president does. Even if the president is not ruling ruling uh, Nigeria or not, or not uh, festering or spreading uh, economic uh, largesse to Nigerians, no matter how you pro how much uh, protests you you carry out on the street, the president cannot go because again the constitution has provided that the only way the uh, or has provided for ways through which a president can be removed from office. It therefore means that once those processes are not activated or utilized, the president cannot be removed uh, from office. Neither can the governor. It doesn't matter how the governor is behaving. Okay. The governor may, may be well, apologies without being rude. The governor may become recalcitrant. And yet the constitution says your position as the governor will still continue until the end of your term. And I, I see if that is not even enough section, I think section 308 or 305 or so, also weaved around the immunity. So for us to uh, have an independent electoral commission, number one, we must ensure that their finances are come through the first line. It, it must not be the executive that must, or neither is it the legislators that gives them money. The money must come the same way that the executive, uh, the executive gets their money uh, uh, from the first line charge or whatever. Their money must be there. And secondly, they must have immunity. They must have immunity from actions taken in order to conduct free and fair election. Mm -hmm. Then thirdly, they must not be removed until, until put it in the same process in the same procedure, tedious procedure that the Constitution provided or provides for in the impeachment of a governor, in the impeachment of a president. Okay. If you do all this, anybody, even if uh, the president appoints the person, if the person gets there and becomes corrupt, strong institution will pick up the person and the needful will be done. But okay. if we fail to do all this 
I can tell you, we'll continue to talk. It will always form a talking right. point, and no action will be that will be taken. All right, let me go back to Vice Omadio K quickly because we're almost out of time. Um, he's saying that we need strong institutions as opposed to worrying about who appoints who into office because, of course, an appointment or a nomination has to take place for someone to occupy the office. And he's given us some key points that he thinks that if we follow, we can help to change the situation. Is INEC going to be the litmus test in building strong institutions? Is there a real power to even want to start the idea of building strong institutions when we know, or, when, or if, for example, and when I say we here, I'm talking about everyone, including the politicians, know that this, they might one day have their day in court, or they might be the ones who will be receiving the short end of the stick. Do we see that happening anytime soon? Yes, just like my colleague said, it's essentially about financial independence and uh, maybe, of course, the level of, um, you know, um, appointment uh, uh, independence also. So you are looking at a situation, um, because presently, anyway, their fund come from the, you know, consolidated fund. So to that extent, um, you can say that uh, funding-wise, uh, they are okay. But then again, you also look at the aspect of even removal, and you discover that uh, probably they cannot be removed without uh, to third the uh, majority in the National Assembly vis-à-vis uh, -vis the state uh, counterpart also. Uh, but the, 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 the fundamental aspect is uh, still this appointment issue. Uh, if we can um, be able to weave it out of the, 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 the ambit of the president or the state governor, look at for instance. So what okay, are you there? Just uh, I think we're having connection issues, unfortunately. But we have to wrap things up because we're almost out of time. Emeka Wadioke um, and Obina Chiku are lawyers. Thank you very much for speaking with us. Unfortunately, we have to go. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. We will take a short break now to see what Nigerians have to say about women and youth participation in politics. And right after that, I'll be saying my goodbyes. Okay, I think um, we need more inclusion of um, women in politics than it's, it is presently, you understand? And because um, if we look across board in different organizations, we've seen women doing great and massively well in whatsoever thing they do. And uh, of recent, we've been seeing the um, very much more inclusion of women in the banking sector in the being the MD of several banks. So women in politics, they are they are on the low side and we think we need more of them because of what they can do. Though even though I'm not going to subscribe hundred percent what a man can do, a woman can do better. But definitely the word is what it is. What a man can do, a woman can do much more okay and very well also. In Nigeria, <laughs> I don't think they try we've tried a lot of women and they failed us. Like um the former minister of petroleum is only one that if if till date they will still be inviting her but she's late now dora Akunli, Akunli. that was uh, the uh, would i say is um uh, uh, the navda lady and uh, the former minister of um finance those are just the two women outside that most of them you see they i don't know how they are using them they will just embezzle money and so maybe the youth, the younger ones coming up now, maybe they will be better, I don't know. So my opinion is they should give them a chance and see. Women are no more in, are no more in, in politics. And we advise a government to allow them to join in politics so that everything will go well in this country. Women in politics, it's like, it's both sides. But sometimes when they give the woman the, the chance to be in politics, they, 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 they provide more. But when they don't give women the chance in politics, they don't provide more. So that is it. Okay. Well, we want to thank you all for staying with us. It's been Plus Politics on Plus TV Africa. I am Mary Anacon, thanking you for watching, and I will see you tomorrow. And don't forget to follow us on our social media, on Instagram and on Facebook, and you can watch our shows live on YouTube at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Have a good evening.